بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعد. There's often a conversation about the differences between secular law and Islamic law. If you're living in a secular country, as we are, there are certain laws, there are certain jurisdictions, certain limitations of what you can and cannot do. And oftentimes people ask the question, what's the difference between secular law and Islamic law? One of the differences that the ulama explain is that in secular law, intention is irrelevant. While in Islamic law, intention is perhaps the most important part of everything that you do. So to give you an example, if I am driving and I'm racing, I'm going really quickly, so fast that I pass the speed limit and the police stops me and he asks, why did you pass the speed limit? And I would say, no, my intentions were good. I'm doing it for X, Y, and Z. He's not going to stop. He'll say, no, you're going to get a citation. Your intention doesn't matter. While in Islam, if I'm praying Salah and I don't have the right intention, then my Salah won't be accepted no matter how beautiful the movements are. That's one difference. And why is there that difference? Because in secular law, they don't believe in the inside. It's all about the external. The external is all that matters. While in Islam, the external and the internal are both equally important. Now, why am I mentioning this? In this life, Allah gives us so many opportunities to excel and to get closer to Him. He gives us so many opportunities to get to Jannah and avoid Jahannam. But not only does He allow us to do this by our actions, He also allows us to do this by our intentions. To the point that Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala in his Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, the first hadith that he begins with is, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ All your actions are based on the intention. Rather, we learn from some of the Salaf, نِيَّةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ That your intention holds more weight than your action. Let's think about that for a moment. My intention holds more weight than my action. Why? Because if I make intention, but I don't do anything, Allah will reward me. But if I do something and I have the wrong intention, forget about getting rewarded, I may even be sinful. So niyyah is very important. And in this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the importance of intention in respect to our good deeds and our bad deeds. How so? The hadith starts, it's on the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, and this is a hadith Qudsi. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We discussed hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi are the words of Allah, the meaning is from Allah, and it is expressed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are three things, Qur'an, hadith, and hadith Qudsi. What are the difference between the three? Quran is the meaning and the words are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith in general is the meaning and the words are from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but Allah is guiding it. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ The Prophet sallam doesn't speak from his whims, but whatever he says, if he ever makes a mistake, Allah will correct him. And then the third is Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi is where the meaning, the content is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the words are from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a hadith Qudsi. Where Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ There are good deeds and there are bad deeds. ثُمَّ بَيَّنَ ذَلِكَ And then he explains what they are. But he tells us, sometimes you don't even need to do the good deed. Why? فَمَنْ هَمَّ بِحَسَنَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَ اللَّهُ عِنْدَ حَسَنَةً كَامِلًا That whoever simply intends to do a good deed, they will get the full reward even if they are unable to carry out that good deed. On the other hand, وَمَنْ هَمَّ بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا But you didn't do it. I feel like watching something haram, I feel like listening to something haram, eating something haram, doing something haram. Just the thought itself, 
will not give me a sin. Rather, if I leave it, I will get a reward. And then ultimately, subhanAllah, this is the mercy of Allah. He says that that's if you don't do the action. If you have the niyyah of doing something good, and then you actually do that deed, not only will you get one reward, you will get 10 rewards, multiplied by 10. For a sin, if you have the intention of doing it, but you don't do it, no sin. But if you do do it, you'll only get one sin. Technically, Allah is making it easy for us to go to Jannah and avoid Jahannam. Now, this said, it's important that the ulama, they explain, when we are talking about the intention of doing good, versus the intention of doing wrong, they're two very different things. Meaning, if I'm sitting in my house and I simply say, I want to do something wrong, or I want to do something good, there's a difference. Because simply wanting to do something good will give me a good reward. But when it comes to sin, sometimes thinking about it can be sinful. When? The thought that comes, I think about it and I enjoy it and I don't stop that thought. What's the hadith telling us? The hadith is clearly telling us that if you think about wrong, you're not going to be sinful. This is saying when you think about wrong, the thought comes and the thought goes. But if the thought comes to your mind and you're enjoying it and you're relishing it, then that sin, that thought can become sinful. For instance, Somebody looked at someone who they're not supposed to be looking at. And then that thought is fixated in their minds. That thought is fixated in their minds and they say that I want to do something haram. Then they immediately say, A'udhu Billah, the thought goes away, no sin. But for the next few minutes, if they're thinking and they're planning and they're trying to do something until they don't even push the thought away, they forget about it. They are sinful for that. Sometimes people say, there's nothing wrong with a thought. It's not the case. There's nothing wrong with the thought when the thought comes and the thought goes. But if the thought comes and I am entertaining it, then that thought will leave a mark. You know, it's very similar to dirt on your clothes. A dirt that comes on your cloth and you wipe it out right away. Think about it. Sometimes you're eating food and a drop of salad and some curry falls on your shirt. You need to run quickly and clean it. You have a few moments, clean it up. If you leave it over there, later on you try to clean it up, it's not gonna go away because it's settled. The ulama explained, when you think of doing something haram, there's nothing wrong with it as long as you don't constantly entertain it. But when it comes to doing something good, simply thinking about it is enough for us to get that reward. So, in summary, this hadith is teaching us that there's good deeds and there are bad deeds. And Allah has made the path of good deeds very simple. Very simple. If I can do something, that's great. If I can't do something, that's also great. You know, subhanAllah, I'll give you a good example. Sometimes we feel very motivated to do something regardless of the repercussions. Those of us who went for Umrah in the past, we will know that by the Hajar Aswad, there's always a ziham, beer. There's always a crowd. It's really hard to get through. Some people, when they're going in, they're pushing, they're punching, they're hitting. Why? Because they feel that, you know what, when I go there and I kiss the Hajar Aswad, I'm going to get a reward. And some people, their logic is, I'm going to push, I'm going to punch. All the sins, I'm going to kiss the Hajar Aswad, inshallah, all the sins will go away as well. It doesn't work like that. Rather, Allah will give us more reward for not going there. Ulama mentioned this. If going to the Hajar Aswad means pushing, punching, kicking, fighting, you know, there's women over there, there's men over there, touching each other, pushing. SubhanAllah, I remember once we were trying to go to the Hajar Aswad, eventually we stopped. There was a sister who went in and she jumped right inside. Her hijab came off her, and it was very bad. Men are pushing her, she's pushing back, they're fighting. It becomes a very nasty scenario. At that point, if a person says, Ya Allah, I can't do this, Give me the reward of going to the Hajar Aswad, you will definitely get this. You know, they give the famous example of Mahmoud and Ayaz. You know, very famous analogy, Mahmoud and Ayaz, the famous Mahmoud Ghaznawi and his famous servant Ayaz. So Mahmoud was a king, he was an emperor, he was a Khalifa, and he had a very smart servant, his name was Ayaz. So one day Mahmoud, he makes an announcement to his people, 
and he says, I'm going to keep all the precious artifacts of the palace in the room, and I'm going to open it to the public. I will give everyone 60 seconds to come. Whatever they touch will belong to them. I'm going to open the door. The whole country can come inside. Whatever they touch, there's a vase over here, there's a chair over there, there's gold over here, there's expensive material over there. Touch it and it is yours. So now, the day comes, everyone's waiting by the door. The countdown begins, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. They open the door, everybody rushes in. And one person is grabbing a kettle, one person is grabbing a pot, one person is grabbing a sword, one person is grabbing a carpet. Everybody's grabbing whatever they can. So in this whole chaos, Mahmoud, the king, he notices that Ayaz, he's not moving. He's just sitting seated, seated over there without moving at all. And the clock is ticking. There's like 20 seconds left, 15 seconds. And he quickly goes to Ayaz and he says, Ayaz, will you not go and grab something? This is your chance. And he says, O oh king, just give me one second and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Five, four, th three seconds left. While everybody's touching everything, Ayaz goes and he hugs the king. And then the king says to Ayaz that time is over, you didn't do anything, you got a hug from me, mashallah. And then Ayaz said, look, you said whatever you touch belongs to you. Everybody went for the possessions. I touched you, so now you belong to me. So forget about one thing, two things, the whole kingdom belongs to me right now. And Mahmoud says, you know, you're a very intelligent person. Get whatever you want, it's going to belong to you right now. Sometimes we're so fixated on doing certain things, we forget that the person who allows, the being who allows that is Allah and He can give us that. When we're jumping for the Hajar Aswad, the Hajar Aswad is just a stone. We're doing that to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I can't kiss the Hajar Aswad, I can go to the Rabb of the Hajar Aswad and get His pleasure. Everybody's, you know, subhanAllah, some people, they don't have the finances to go for Umrah every year. They don't have the finance to go for Hajj. They don't have the means to do things. And they feel despondent. No. A person, Allah gave them the ni'mah of going for Hajj and Umrah. Alhamdulillah. If I don't have that money, I am not deprived. The Rabb of Umrah, the Rabb of Hajj is available in the masjid. And I can still go to Allah and get it. So we have to remember, the one distributing, the distributor is more important than what's being distributed. So let's turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember that our intention is more valuable than our action. And that's the summary of this hadith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from our intentions and benefit from our actions. And we ask Allah to protect us from those thoughts that are evil even though they're in intention because it takes an intention like a seed, eventually it grows and it ruins our iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all of our deeds multiple times. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.